All right, welcome to today, today's webcast. We've got CERN Solutions and Perspectium. This is the, the first of a couple and, and uh, you know, we've got uh, Michael Christiansen here from, from Perspectium joining us. I'm Josh Tessero. I'm uh, the Practice Manager for Security and Risk at uh, CERN Solutions. Got lots of experience in the platform. Uh, just a, a quick sound bit, I guess, about CERN Solutions. Uh, you know, we're one of ServiceNow's elite partners. We're one of the few partners that's a, um, you know, a certified um, application developer partner. So we you make a lot of store apps, do, do a lot there, and we provide services across the entire platform. Uh, Michael, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? You bet. Thanks, Josh. Uh, I'm Mike Christiansen with Perspectium. I'm a solution consultant there. And just by way of introduction to Perspectium, if you don't know us, uh, we are a process integration solution for ServiceNow. Our founder, David Liu, was one of the founding developers at ServiceNow, and that naturally gave him uh, you know, a complete understanding into the intricacies of ServiceNow and the need for a solution like ours to really complement uh, and extend ServiceNow in making it easy to get data out of ServiceNow and then extend processes to other systems. So in a nutshell, that's who we are, and uh, we're glad you joined us today. Awesome, glad to have you here. So uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, this is part of a series. It's, it's right now a three-part series that might grow, you know, depending on, on how these conversations go, but uh, the series is sol Solving ServiceNow Data Challenges. We're in the, the first episode today, which is Achieving Data Transparency or ServiceNow Data Transparency. And um, you know our, our next two episodes are going to be securing ServiceNow data against the unexpected and extending ServiceNow workflows to partners. Uh, we're, we've got kind of a couple slides to go through. We're going to have a nice conversation about kind of you know what some of these things mean and and you know what are some things customers are doing. Um, if you have any questions as we go through, feel free to stick those in the Q and A, and we'll we'll either answer them kind of naturally as part of the conversation, or we'll we'll circle back um, as part of a Q and A at the end. So uh, thanks for joining and. Uh, We'll get started here with the first one. So, um, you know, we talk about data transparency, you know, what does that mean? Um, you know, organizations have lots of data sources, right, that, that have important or critical enterprise data. They've got stuff coming from their ERP. They've got environmental or operational data about their infrastructure or other things. Um, they have work management data or workflow management data, which is often going to be, you know, at least for us in ServiceNow. Um, and then they've got employee and data and customer and vendor data. And there's lots of things that describe operational or, or company health that, are, that span multiple data sources, right? So organizations have a need to be able to get those things, those, that data in one place in a near real time fashion in order to create, um, you know, reports and dashboards and, and that aggregate things and give them views to make decisions quickly. Michael, I don't, I don't know if you want to add some color to that around, you know, what you've seen or what this means to you. Yeah, I think, you know, with, with a lot of the customers and the people that we deal with uh, and we work with on a regular basis, we find that within the tools like ServiceNow, there are, there, there's great functionality that helps them get a glimpse into their data, right? And it gets the report out into the hands of all of the end users. And, and what we find is that there's kind of another level of analytics where there's a little bit of help needed. And that's where Perspectium steps in. And, and this next level really is where we're starting to look at combining data with other sources. Maybe it's ServiceNow data with Avaya data, right? Call data for a call system uh, or a call center. Or maybe it's combining with an HR system or uh, or maybe a CMDB that's stored in another place. So, so that's, that's kind of the next level that we find that most people wanna to go to. They wanna get beyond just showing a list of incidents that came up today, and they wanna to go to more of a machine learning approach or more AI approach to their, their data and go big data with it. So we, we find that to be the case in a lot of situations. Um, there's additional functionality that we see a lot of people come to us with that uh, they want to just do uh, like hierarchy reporting or other things yep. that are a little bit more difficult in inside of an application like ServiceNow. So um, that, that that's some of the things that we see a lot of, uh, a lot of the problems that people yep. face where there's a need to enhance the functionality of, of what they have in their, their tools. 
Yeah, I actually had a customer, I think, uh, I think it was the beginning of last year that, you know, they 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 were uh, implementing ServiceNow. They were using quite a bit of the platform. And as part of that, they, you know, as, a, as an organization, they had Tableau as a reporting standard for all their kind of business analytics. And they were, they were trying to get all the ServiceNow data into Tableau for some of the things where, you know, ServiceNow data was just a small component of what, what they were trying to, to report on. And they, they found that to be challenging, right? I mean, there's all the referential and schema complexity in ServiceNow, right? You got referential data. How do I, how do I export data to like a Tableau database and make it reportable when I've got sysids referencing things? And, and that, that ended up being a, you know, a pretty big effort and a, a serious time commitment. And, and, you know, we had to decide what things uh, were critical data to have in Tableau, right? Cause it, it, it became very hard to, to dump everything. And, um, you know, this is something that we're seeing more of as, as you get all these, uh, as, as businesses, like you said, kind of take more of an analytics or, or, or data focused approach to make decisions. There's, there's more and more need to be able to find a, a, an easy way to, to make that data part of your, your reporting roll up. Yeah, exactly. And, and what we see, um, you know, a lot of as, as well is, um, in addition to the aggregating and uh, you know getting the data out of Tableau is just the need to scale, and yep. um, you know if you if you're creating a hundred incidents a day uh, in ServiceNow and that's all you're doing, a lot of people will approach that with a you know an API connector, a homegrown API connector. Yep. Right. Probably not a big deal. Not going to be any impact on ServiceNow and or or on your development team, things like that. Not a lot of complexity there. But where we see a need uh, for a solution like Perspectium is when we start to scale and we're talking really large numbers of, of data. And we have some customers that are, are moving you know, upwards of, of 10 million records a day and, and on a busy day, even you know, higher than that. And so that's the other complexity we face is the idea of scaling our, our data movement from ServiceNow. Yeah, let's let's actually take a look at a couple of those those kind of customer specific scenarios. So, you know, ServiceNow is just as we saw in the previous previous view, right? ServiceNow is just the uh, a component of enterprise data typically, but it's a component that, you know, can be hard to to incorporate into into a centralized uh, data warehouse, right? So, um I mean some big names here, these are all I I guess, you know, current current Perspectium customers. Um right. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, PayPal, for example? That's that's one that that you know I think has been around forever, right? Yeah, PayPal's been around a long time, and uh, this is this is one that's near and dear to my heart. I started working with PayPal uh, from the beginning of our relationship, and so I was able to watch them uh, transform as they implemented our solution. But they were faced with performance challenges when they were trying to extract data out of of, of ServiceNow, and they had had a homegrown solution that they used and they found um, just they had several different problems that came up from using that. And, you know, performance is one, you know, reliability of data is another one. And, and most companies face this. So this is not something that's specifically unique to PayPal. Yep. But they also need to combine data, like we talked about earlier, with data from other apps and report on the performance of their online payment processing system. Now, during the year, it's not as big a deal as it is this time of year we're facing right now. We've got holidays yep. coming up, everybody's doing our last minute shopping, and an outage is, is extremely detrimental. And so by pulling the data out, combining it with the other systems, um, they're able to get a clear picture, you know, what's going on. They were able to find out, because we're pulling data out in a real-time basis, they're able to find out, hey, we've got a problem that started, and we can tell it started because we have these three tickets that are related to it already, and yep. they're able to address it. But not only that, once you get the data out, um, you know, PayPal's able to do more machine learning where we're starting to get into the predictive behavior and identify uh, we are in a scenario that it looks like we might have a problem. Let's get some resolution in place before that happens. And then there's zero impact to our, it, it, you know, it's a financial impact, right? It's a, it's an impact to the bottom line. So then they can say zero impact to bottom line, right? 
so that's so that's really interesting. I heard a couple things that, that can be a struggle with with some of these, you know, if, if you were to do, take the homegrown approach like you described, right? So one of those was the the large transaction volumes in a way that is not impactful to ServiceNow performance, right? You know, the users aren't going to perceive a, an impact there. I also heard that that it's a real time connection. So if you're using something for like dashboarding or monitoring, uh, like PayPal is, you know, they have they have near real time data that allows them to kind of see impact quickly. And then the other thing uh, you mentioned was effectively um, lossless, a lossless data feed, right? We're confident that things don't get uh, dropped or, or um, you know, are failed to be delivered without some type of notice or intervention. Yeah, exactly. And there's, there's several components that go into that guarantee of data um, from different levels of monitoring uh, at the customer side and at the perspective side. Um, and then some receipts capability where a message is actually sent back to verify whether the data has made it or not. And then yep. from there, you can either resend the message or um, do uh, you know, troubleshooting and try to figure out exactly what's going on. So, so there's, from the data guarantee side, that's, that's kind of the level that we, we look at from the monitoring and, and the receipts. And then, you know, again, from the scaling perspective, the way we're approaching it is Technologically, it's quite different from what a typical uh, integration, the homegrown integration style might be, where a homegrown approach, you would make a call into ServiceNow. And so the more data you have, the more calls you're making. And that's where we start to see the performance impact. But instead, we're pushing data out. The, the minute it's adjusted on a, or the minute a record is adjusted, we're pushing that record out to the database. And so it's a a different approach to getting the data out that allows us to uh, preserve the, the the functionality and performance of the ServiceNow instance. That's very cool. You you mentioned um, well. I mean, it it has to be working right because it looks like ServiceNow is a customer. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? That's that's pretty interesting to me to see see them on there. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're probably one of our biggest customers. Um, if you're familiar with the High System, uh, they they use us to keep their high system up. Um, historically, if you've used it for a long time, you may remember they had outages for a period of time when they did an upgrade. And those outages were pretty costly from a customer service perspective, it was costly. And, and so with Perspectium coming in, saving out the data into a queue um, and preserving that data, they're able to do upgrades without in, in any downtime. And that was a significant uh, impact on their business. And then they also use uh, Perspectium to pull data out, uh, on, uh, sales data out. And then they're able to do, you know, analytics on that and put dashboards in front of their executive leadership that show exactly what's going on in a real-time basis. So they know, uh, you know, at any given time what's what's happening in their, their sales department and it's in a clear, concise uh, display for their executives. So That's, they've they've been a customer for a little while, and uh, and and theirs is big. It's a big installation just because of the sheer number of or the quantity of data that they're pushing out. Yeah, we're looking at probably ten million to a hundred million per per day uh, records per day, which is quite significant. Yeah, th those are huge numbers. I think when we've when we've seen stuff like this in the past, right? And you're looking at trying to get ser service now data somewhere else. You know, hundreds of millions of records a day is 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 almost always per, you know impactful to performance. So it's interesting that that you know you guys have a solution that allows people to still get the the service now experience they expect, but we we can yeah. you know replicate that data somewhere else. Um, you know, there's there's a huge variety of of looks like target databases here. You know, I think some of it's even in the cloud. I see Snowflake on here, which is really interesting to me because we're, we're all hearing all kinds of things about Snowflake. Do you want to kind of yeah. talk about that real quick? Yeah, that's one of the, you know, the big trends. I think a lot of people are moving to that kind of a data storage system, uh, you know, a cloud-based and uh, we have a customer that's a, a global sports apparel company and they use us to move data from ServiceNow into a Snowflake uh, database. And when they approached us, it was a couple of reasons. Again, it was similar to what a lot of other people had. They have, there's complexity in the integration. 
and there's this scaling issue. Um, but they also just had a mandate inside their company that all data in the different applications and tools had to be backed up um, and consolidated for their machine learning and, and AI initiatives. And so that was one of the driving um, reasons for them coming to us and, and talking about this type of an integration. So they have a, a very large uh, amount of data as well. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but they're very, very significant. Um, you know, I, I actually came from a customer site prior to working for Perspectium. I worked for Intermountain Healthcare out in Salt Lake City, Utah. And it, you know, it's a hospital network at the time. It was about 31 hospitals and over a hundred clinics. They just uh, joined with um, another hospital network in the Midwest that'll double that, I believe. But, but we were faced with very similar challenges. We needed to bring data out. We needed to look yep. at it in, in depth, but we didn't have the scale that we're talking about with these other companies. Yep. And, and so we were looking at about six to 10 million records a month. So it wasn't, it wasn't a huge deal, but it was big enough deal that it was not something that we could safely and, and efficiently do ourselves. So we use Perspectium to, to pull data out in many different scenarios and for different use cases, but, um, but that was kind of the size of, of our implementation there. So there's quite a range that it, that it fits, that Perspectium fits the, the bill for. Yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, one of the things, you know, I mentioned that we've had some experience with this with customers, right? You know, it's a growing need. And, and one of the things we've run into is, is even if you, even if you build up, you know, the, the custom integration and, and you've, you've got your data flowing, there's kind of a, a big overhead, I guess, around, um, you know, maintaining kind of all the schema changes, right? We, we, we know that as, as ServiceNow developers, we're constantly adjusting things in ServiceNow to kind of, you know, meet the need of the customer. And, and then you've got to go figure out, well, what are all the downstream data sources? And I got to go update those. And it becomes this big process. And I've seen customers dedicate like multiple full-time resources to maintaining some of these feeds. Um, I'm just curious kind of what your experience has been with Perspectium in, in, in that area. Yeah, that's a good question. And, and what we find is that we don't need to add any additional resources for this. Um, most companies, they've got a, a ServiceNow admin and maybe, maybe a handful or, or more ServiceNow developers. And this, uh, the, the integration that Perspectium provides, uh, it, it really com is comprised of three parts. You've got a native application that installs inside of ServiceNow. Uh, and that's what packages up the data, pushes it out. It looks for changes. It, yeah, it's where you would set any filtering criteria where you'd say, I only wanna send data to our local database when it's assigned to uh, group A, B, and C. Yeah, so you would set up all that logic there. Uh, the second component would be the Perspectium integration mesh, or it's basically a, a message bus. And that's the queuing mechanism. So the data would be pushed there. And that's, that's in the cloud, uh, either a Google cloud or a, 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 an AWS. Uh, and, and then from there, uh, on the customer side in their data center, they would have an agent that would reach up and pull the data down and then make the insert into the the appropriate database and tables. And so, so when we implement, you've, we've got to, to gather a few different people. We're going to gather, you know, your network guys, your, your server yep. guys to set that up, and then your, your ServiceNow admins. And, and from there, typically, it's just the ServiceNow admin that manages it from there going forward. So you have another team. Uh, let's say another team realizes they can get at the ServiceNow data, and they say, yeah, that's great. I need access to it. Yep. You point into the database, their tableau developers write their reports against it. And if the data is not there that they need, they contact the admin and say, hey, I need you to send out the CMDB data so we can start writing reports off of that. And then within a, a couple of minutes, he can, he or she could set up that share and begin sending data out for the CMDB uh, tables in service now. So it's a pretty quick and efficient way of uh, of sending stuff out and and really puts the control in the hands of the ServiceNow team. Yeah, that's always nice, right? Because then you you can yeah. see you can see the downstream dependencies of all of the things in ServiceNow right from ServiceNow because you're configuring the the data streams from ServiceNow and that kind of puts the power back in the hands of the ServiceNow administrator, which is cool. Yeah, um, exactly. 
I, I guess just a reminder to folks uh, who joined us, you know, if you have any questions, there's a, there's a Q and A. Um, well, we've got Michael, we want to kind of pick his brain and make sure that we, we get all our questions answered. So feel free to feel free to post anything there and we'll make sure to address it. Um, well, this is very cool. It, you know, it, it, from a, from a database, a target database perspective, you know, do you guys have limitations around uh, where we send the data or is it pretty much, hey, if you've got a, a, a mainstream a database solution, we can accommodate it? You know, really all the mainstream database solutions out there, we accommodate. Um, several years ago, we typically would send data out to Oracle, SQL Server, um, and SAP HANA, and you know, maybe a Postgres SQL yep. uh, database. That has been expanding uh, as demands come in, and we're seeing Snowflake a lot more, like we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of customers wanting to go there. Uh, maybe an S3 bucket. Uh, we've got customers asking for that and we have implementations there. So that, yeah, it's expanding and uh, it's typically just a configuration that we set up uh, in the agent that tells the data where to go. So it doesn't affect, uh, doesn't really affect anything on the ServiceNow side uh, unless there's transformations that need to happen before you send the data out. But uh, typically it's just a configuration that needs to be set up on the, the agent side that tells it where to go and any special uh, connection or credential information for that data store type. Very cool. And then it, and then it, and it keeps everything up to date for you from a schema perspective, which I think is one of the things people, people run into quite a bit. Yeah. And that's a good point. You know, that's one thing that's been coming in a lot lately. We've, we've been getting a lot of questions about this concept of being uh, schema aware or schema automation, where it picks up any changes that happen in service. Now, let's say we add a column, um, you know, Perspective automatically picks that up, sends it over to the database, creates the column, then begins to populate it with the new data. Or if you make a data type change, it's automatically picking that up. So that makes life easier on your DBAs and yep. they don't have to, to go and make those changes. Those are picked up automatically. And so really the only involvement from your DBAs might be some of the typical maintenance they would do on any database, creating indexes or you know, that type of work. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's just, that's just, I guess, another way you get that, that sort of uh, real time data transparency, right? It's, it's one less thing you got to wait on to happen in order to see your data where you need it, which is, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, time is money and we, we try to eliminate, eliminate any delays that we can. And that's, that's one that could crop up. Very cool. So we've we've got Perspectium in place that has, you know, helped us achieve achieve our data, you know, data transparency. So if we've got data flowing into kind of a common repository, as many of your customers do, and then we can feed it into kind of any of our our organizational, uh, you know, BI preferred BI tool, right? And and make sure that we're getting all the reporting we need. That's, I think I think the the objective everybody wants in Perspectium is the missing piece. Yep, absolutely. Very cool. Well, um, I think that was, I think that's most of the things we plan to cover today. If anybody has any questions, feel free to post them. Let's see, we did have one here. Ooh, that's a good one. So um, ServiceNow has permissions controlled via ACL. How do we replicate or enforce these rules once we take the data out of ServiceNow using Perspectium? Okay, good, good question. So Here's, here's what we did uh, as a customer of Perspectium. Uh, we had data that was coming out of service now for multiple teams. And some of the teams wanted to control their data and say only we can get at this. So in that case, uh, the data is uh, locked down at the database level. So permissions would need to be created or granted that would control that. Now, if there, there might be a scenario where uh, let's say an HR team, they have their own database and they want to put all their data there. And yep. maybe you have a, a server team that wants ticket data or, or something like that. Um, Perspectium can allow you to create different queues that will send the data diff to different locations. So that way you can isolate it and, and meet the security needs of, of the teams that are requesting the data. So, so that's one approach that or, or another approach that could be taken in addition to just managing rights and permissions at the database level. Yep. 
Okay, so there's there's some you know there you've got to think about that actively as you're you're figuring out how you're where you're sending the data and how you plan to present that through your your reporting tool of choice. Yeah, exactly. And and Perspectium, it, it's an integration as a service. We're not throwing a toolkit at you. We're we're providing a service for the the length of of the contract. And and so Perspectium at the beginning would sit down. Uh, with your implementation team and we would identify what do you need to share? Where does it need to go? Does it need to go to multiple locations? Uh, do we need to fan the data out or do we need to send one piece of data to one place like we mentioned one to another? Yep. And so that would be part of the service is identifying, you know, exactly what do we need to do here? And how, how can we really meet the needs of the widest audience at your company? Uh, with the service now data hmm. it sounds sounds like it's a it's a pretty white glove approach right you're getting kind of um, all the help you need from start to finish yeah absolutely yeah very cool any other questions feel free to put them in the q a and we'll we'll address them here um, we are coming to the the end of our our first session we've got two more so um, you know please go and and subscribe to uh, the additional uh, you know, parts of the series, we've, uh, you know, continuing the conversation kind of around some of the ServiceNow data challenges, um, you know, pl please do uh, subscribe obviously on LinkedIn or, or, or like on LinkedIn for, for any of the posts and then also for both Perspectium and Cerna. Um, Let me give you a little sneak peek into what we'll be talking about in our next uh, webinar. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about the backup and restore capability and, and that's commonly being used by people that are upgrading from older instances yep. of service now, like that are on Oracle and they want to move to a MariaDB. We have a, a major bank that's uh, that we're working with right now to do that. Um, or maybe you need to have an archive of your service now data. And so that's another way that, that yep. we're, uh, we're providing those services. So we'll explore that a little bit more in depth uh, in the next webinar. Yep. Very cool. Well, uh, thank you for joining us, guys. Hope to hope to see everybody here uh, on the next session. And um, thank you, Michael, for for lending your your expertise. You bet. Hopefully, everybody has a, a wonderful rest of the day. Yep. Thank you, everyone.